four people have died after a small boat carrying migrants capsized while crossing the channel from France in freezing conditions. More than 40 people were rescued in a joint operation by air and sea conducted by the British and French navies and coast guards who were searching in the area circled over there. Over 30 people were pulled from the water by the crew of a fishing boat. Some of the survivors were then airlifted to hospital near Dover. Today's incident comes a day after the Prime Minister announced new measures to stop illegal crossings from France. Our home editor Mark Easton reports. The Mayday call came around 3 a.m., dark and below freezing, an extraordinary rescue effort to save the lives of dozens of migrants in a sinking dinghy in the middle of the English Channel. A fishing boat first on the scene, pulling people from the stricken inflatable, men, women and children screaming for help. <laughs> RNLI lifeboats, the Royal Navy, French Navy and a Coast Guard helicopter joined the operation. With daybreak, the search for survivors intensified, rescue teams trying to spot anyone in the cold waters of the channel. But within a few hours, it became clear the search was for bodies, and later one of those who didn't make it was brought ashore at Dover. Lifeboat crews tried to resuscitate some survivors on the quayside. A helicopter took one adult victim to the William Harvey Hospital in Ashford, where he later died. Another adult also received treatment and is thought to have since been discharged. 450,000 people. In the House of Commons, the Home Secretary reflected the mood of shock at what had happened in UK waters just off the Kent coast. These are the days that we dread. Crossing the Channel in unseaworthy vessels is a lethally dangerous endeavour. It is for this reason, above all, that we are working so hard to destroy the business model of the people smugglers, evil, organised criminals who treat human beings as cargo. Migrants from other dinghies have been brought ashore in Dover during the course of the day. Almost 45,000 have now crossed this year, despite the risks and the costs. Those rescued today said they'd paid people traffickers £5,000 for a place on a flimsy dinghy and the promise of a better life in Britain. The sea flat calm when they set off from the French coast in the early hours, but with a two-metre swell in the middle of the channel. How do we stop people making these perilous journeys? There are opposing strategies. Refugee agencies say the answer is to make it easier for asylum seekers to seek refuge in the UK so they don't have to make the crossings in the first place. The government is intent on making it much more difficult, criminalising and swiftly deporting anyone who arrives by an irregular route. By adopting an approach which is all about punishment and control, it doesn't stop the crossings. We need an approach which is about compassion, above control, and which recognises the reasons people have to flee. The owner of the fishing vessel which first arrived on the scene spoke of his pride at the crew's actions. Horrific incident, but uh, you know our guys there were, were proud that you know they did a cracking job, you know, um, rescuing 31 uh, of, of those guys. Yeah. It's just over a year since 27 people lost their lives in the Channel, a tragedy that prompted both UK and French governments to say they were stepping up efforts to defeat the people smugglers. But since then, the criminal gangs have expanded their operations, while the desperation of those who would buy their services appears undiminished. Well, in the past few years, the number of people arriving in the UK in small boats has increased rapidly. Five years ago, it was fewer than 300. Now nearly 45,000 people have made the crossing this year alone. Well, Mark Easton is here with me. Mark, yesterday the government announced new measures to try to stop small boats from coming here. Would those measures have prevented today's tragedy? Well, the Prime Minister has said that solving the problem of small boats is one of his top priorities in government. And his announcement yesterday of a new law which would make it, he says, unambiguous that anyone arriving in a small boat would be unable to claim asylum is part of a raft of measures really designed to convince migrants that there's no point in paying the people traffickers to make that journey because they simply won't be able to start a new life here. But evidence that reducing those kind of pull factors will deter migrants is not actually 
actually that compelling. And it's also unclear how those new rules will fit with the UK's international legal commitments as a signatory to both the UN Refugee Convention and the European Convention on Human Rights. It seems quite likely that the UK government is going to have to argue its case, continuing to argue its case in the courts.